न्यूज क्लिक और इतिहास के पन्ने में आपका एक बार फिर से स्वागत है स्प्लिट्स आर रेगुलर ऑकरेंसेस इन इंडियन पॉलिटिक्स एज रीसेंट इवेंट्स इन द शिवसेना डेमोन्स्ट्रेटेड तमिल पॉलिटिक्स हैज ऑलवेज फ्लमक्स्ड मोस्ट इंडियंस एस्पेशली दोज इन नॉर्थ इंडिया बट इट इज इंपॉर्टेंट टू अंडरस्टैंड तमिल पॉलिटिक्स आफ्टर ऑल the state elects 39 members to lok sabha tamil politics is in a state of transition stalwarts who dominated tamil politics have died in recent years mk karunanidhi and j l jayalalitha have passed in the past 6 years the other towering personality in modern tamil politics mg ramachandran also a film star died way back in 1987 bust but his ghost lingered on for a long time the new generation of politicians are still establishing foothold i previously mentioned splits in parties because exactly 50 years ago in october 1972 to be precise the then president of dmk and the chief minister karuna nidhi expelled mgr who then went on to form the ai admk and vertically split the dravidian movement we will this use we will use this issue as a watershed development to understand and analyze tamil politics joining me on this program is a very leading academic and uh, a former professor of the jesus and mary college of delhi university sudha ja uh, sudha ja first of all welcome to this program and i am extremely glad that you are here to talk about tamil politics which is by and large not understood by people outside tamil nadu or maybe at best the the other southern states now to begin with we are talking about a split which took place 50 years ago karunanidhi and mg ramachandran going in different directions let's try to get a sense of what happened in tamil politics way back in 1972 we know that there was a background to it in the sense that a 67 assembly elections in 1967 when the congress lost power for the first time thereafter we have never had a congress chief minister in tamil nadu so it really started a new political process and a new phase of tamil politics suddenly in 1972 5 years after the 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 the, the situation changing elections in 67 that you have the split what was what really went wrong many people say that karuna nidhi had already started promoting his son you know mk muthu at that time who was just about stepping into cinema was it just purely personal space and you know the the desire to promote somebody from the family and mg ramachandran wanting greater political space or were there any real ideological divergence also at that particular time or did these come about later on I think it was actually a number of factors yes. that constituted the background to this split. There was the fact that the there was a there was a widespread feeling among sections of the Tamil public mm. that the DMK was no longer living up to the standards and the principles of its founding moment. in 1949 mm-hmm. and which had been set for in a very forthright manner by the then leader cn anadure no, somehow karunanidhi was falling below those standards mm. there was the question of corruption there was the question of strengthening the family's role in, in politics. politics and i think there was some older members of the party i wouldn't actually put mg ramachandran as one of the older members at this point of time but right from the early 1950s he had played an enormous role in propagating the principles and the uh, and the uh, ideology of the uh, of the dmk so i think he had some personal uh, 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 
problems with Karunanidhi. He felt that he was not being given, given his due. Greater, greater political. Yeah, given views. his due. And I think all these factors led to the split, which was a very traumatic development, which, was a, which had very traumatic consequences for the entire party organization because it was a, it was a vertical split. And right. within about five, six years, not only did MGR form a party of his own, as you mentioned, mm. the Anna DMK to start off That's with, right. which later on became the All India, All India Anna, Anna DMK, DM, DMK right. uh, but it, it also won power in elections to form the government in, I 76, think, 1976. 70, 70, 70, the Karuna Nidhi continued to be the chief minister. Till 76, Six. I think after that they might have been, yes. that was during the emergency. Yeah. It's possible that there yeah. might have been a short period of central because rule Because the Karunanidhi government was dismissed during the emergency That's by right. Indira That's right. So there was a period when there was a president's rule and then yeah. in the elections, the AIDMK led by M.G. Ramachandran came to power, they got a fairly comfortable majority yeah, with and the they formed the government. They were uh, electorally allied with the Congress and um, they came to power. Now, you're talking about electorally allied with the Congress. We'll come to this as to how it happened. Mm. We first must try to understand that the DMK actually emerged from a very strong anti-center, anti-Congress and most importantly, anti-Hindi sentiments. Yes. Most of which, which developed through the 1950s, it kind of really came out into the open in very violent ways during the 64-65 anti-Hindi struggle. And then thereafter, the agitation continued for two more years. Eventually, in 1967, when the assembly elections were held, the Congress ended up, yeah. you know, virtually being, you know, reduced to just about 40 or 45 seats in the state assembly. And including its stalwarts like yes. K. Kamaraj defeated in the polls yes. by a student leader right. or owing allegiance right. to the DMK. Yeah. So, so that was possibly the first election that we saw in independent India where past reputations did not matter yeah. because of very severe ideological reasons, because of very strong rejection of very centrist policies. I would like to, to talk to you, so how did this uh, you know, anti-Hindi, anti-center, anti-Congress get mellowed down. How did MGR, uh, you know, while he and Karunanidhi went separate trajectories, but overall brought about a sense of moderation in the anti-sentiment, anti-Hindi sentiments in Tamil Nadu? How did it happen? Uh, I think it's a, it's quite a challenge to maintain a combative position for a state <clears throat> then ruled by a non-Congress party uh, to maintain against the central government. The mm -hmm. central government, given the quasi-federal status of the Indian Union, mm -hmm. is very powerful at all times. Maintaining a combative position, challenging the center, whether it was on language, on the imposition of Hindi, retaining English, uh, uh, giving importance to Tamil, uh, 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 regarding plan outlays, saying that Tamil Nadu was discriminated against in uh, plan allocations and so on and so forth, maintaining it at this level of combativeness and challenge is very draining even for seasoned even for seasoned politicians like Karunanidhi and the members of the DMK. I think a time had come when somewhere this position needed to be diluted in the interest of the state, in the interest of politicians all around. I think side by side, something else was also happening. And that was throughout the 60s, and particularly, uh, it, it, it probably speeded up in the 70s, the Tamil Nadu economy was getting more and more integrated with the Indian economy. Mm -hmm. I think that was also, I mean, it would apply to every part of India, but I think 
um, this was uh, this was something real that was happening in Tamil Nadu. The, uh, 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 the, e the economy was becoming more and more dependent, uh, mutual dependence, and this sort of um, uh, integration was taking place. I would also think mm -hmm. that the years of representation and the years of reservation of affirmative action for the backward caste, something like 69 percent, which right. is the highest in the country. In mm. fact, they had to secure a constitutional amendment right. because the Supreme for, Court had said not more than 50 percent reservation for backward caste. So for cars. that, you, they required the support of some party at the center. I think they not only required the party, uh, the, the support of the, the constant support of the center to maintain this level of representation, but I think within the backward classes, amongst the backward classes as a broad category, certain social changes were also occur occurring. Changes that brought them closer to the pan Indian form of. Hinduism and Hindu beliefs. Right. This is uh, this is my understanding. Where backward castes, they were no longer uh, uh, sticking only to Tamil. So, cultural which means that the old tenets which evolved in Tamil politics right from the early decades of the twentieth century, some of it was being left behind. We know that there was a very strong, you know, uh, you know, movement within. Uh, Tamil politics and Tamil society through the 20th century, uh, how it developed. So, was there any change taking place? In, 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 in Tamil society? Yes, yes. I think the backward classes were acquiring confidence and a sense of strength. Uh, a position from which they not only emulated Bra some Brahminical rituals which mm -hmm. they felt bolstered their social status and prestige, but they were feeling more confident, you know, vis-a-vis -vis the Brahmins in Tamil Nadu. The, in, in Tamil Nadu, the Brahmins who had who had had a stranglehold, I would say, uh, till 1947 right. over politics, over the economy, and in terms of social status, to, they had been reduced to a, a very, extent, very to weak a great position. Extent, but they started... Uh, you know, some kind of a revival, or, you know, began along with this adjustment, which took place a you know, better strategic alliance or a or a understanding of that. You required somebody from the center, either the government or the ruling party, or at least one of the major national parties, not see constantly as adversaries. Yeah. That is what was was happening. Now, if we actually look back, you know, you were talking about. Uh, backward caste, you know, that when you look at Karunanidhi, Karun, mm. I remember that when Karunanidhi died, several, uh, you know, articles were written up at that time. There's one particular sentence which stayed on with me, mm. was that he, by the end of his life, that was in 2018, mm. was a, more a Hindu than what he was when he first became Chief Minister in 1969, after the death of Annadurai. Would you actually say that there was some partial truth in what uh, uh, this uh, obituary had argued. How much of a Hindu he was would be very difficult. In terms of basically acceptance of rituals, that yeah. is what was the yardstick. He I remember being pointed out that he's the one who started self-respect marriages, where you really did not go to any religious ceremony he, to undergo, to, to marry. But then it has become, rituals have become much more integral to Tamil society now than what it used to be earlier, you know, self-respect marriages. One hears much less of it now than what one did in the 1970s. Publicly, he continued to reject That's right. Hindu rituals till the very end. But on and off, you, these stories leaked out in the tabloid press in Tamil Nadu that he visited the temple in his native village in Tiruvaru district. The temple of, uh, uh, most of the temples are dedicated to Kali as the right. mother goddess. That's the most uh, 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 
popular form of worship in also Tamil. Shiva. Yeah, okay. not so much. Not so much to Shiva in the rural areas. It's to mainly, the, mainly the mother yeah, goddess. The, yeah, the mother goddess Kali, okay. Kaliyaman. So all the, the the sort of news constantly um, uh, leaked into the public. Now, this sphere. must have been leaking into the public sphere, not because of any greater or increased personal religiosity, but basically because it got some kind of a social traction. That would be the reason. You, you are right. I think backward caste themselves were becoming more ritualistically oriented and ritualistically oriented in the orthodox Hindu fashion. And I think this, this is the sort of change that I'm mentioning that, you know, that, I, uh, that I'm talking about. Right. I think which required a somewhat moderate, a much more moderate stance, as you implied, towards the center. Not to look at the center as an adversary, adversary constantly, all the time. but to try and hone a policy where you would be, where you could get benefits for Tamil Nadu and at the same time uh, 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 be on the right side of the center. I think it was, uh, 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 it was politically challenging, but it was the, you know, the years before had been so full of, as I constantly say, combativeness that had to be toned down at some point or the other. Now, you know, what we are talking about now, here I come to a paradox. We are talking about 1967 as the first election where a Dravidian party came to power and thereafter the Congress or any national party never came to power on its own in the state. So what we are talking about five and a half decades of the marginalization of central political forces in Tamil Nadu. But we are also seeing uh, you know, greater amount of acceptance in a realization among the Tamil parties that there is need to have the center as a partner in some way or the other. The two parties, you know, DMK and AIDMK, uh, as it was later on formed, went separate directions and not exactly an alternating position, but they had long periods when one party was in government, then it would sit out in opposition while the other party was in uh, government. You had, of course, a very charismatic presence of M.G. Ramachandran, and even after that, a bit of turbulence within AIA, DMK. Then J.J. Lalita, she became, uh, you know, very uh, powerful and then became chief minister and, and became a very towering personality on her own right. Now, despite this changed attitude towards the center, there is still a great feeling of of rejection, that is what one sees as a journalist in Tamil Nadu, of central political parties during elections. Unless aligned with any regional party, either the DMK or the AIDMK, neither the Congress nor any of the other uh, national parties and most importantly the BJP in the last uh, decade and half that it has actually staged, uh, uh, you know, you know, come onto the center stage at the center. It has really never been able to find its feet on its own. Why is this the case? Yeah, that they have to play national political parties have to play a secondary role you know, in Tamil politics. I think national political parties they become <coughs> legitimate in the eyes of the Tamil voting public only if they are allied to a. Tamil party. It could be the DMK, it could be the AI, ADMK. Uh, without that, Tamils, it appears, didn't trust the national parties, whether it was the Congress or now whether it's the BJP. All of them in some way or the other were believed to be fostering policies that gave importance to Hindi, to purely North Indian forms of um, how politics was to be done. I think that mm. was also uh, 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 that was also there in the minds of the uh, Tamil public. That if you wanted things done the Tamil way, uh, a national party could be allowed a presence only when it was aligned to one of to the one DMK of the two factions. DMK yeah. factions. So that way it kind of moderates its position. Now, you know, we see that the BJP has been at the national level right from the mid-1990s onwards, more than 25 years that it has been as a party. 
but not as domineering as it is since 2014. What we are now seeing is that basically over articulation of the Hindi, Hindu, Hindustan uh, f you know, uh, construct of the BJP that gets identified with, that the BJP means a Hindu oriented party, a Hindi oriented party which gets possibly reinforced by the latest report of the official languages committee which was submitted by the union home minister to the president just a few days before we are having this uh, discussion. We talk about uh, you, you know using Hindi in all central educational institutions right from schools to technical institutions like IITs, IIMs you know in, in uh, regional languages being taught there. Also in every high court use of local languages and uh, you know Hindi as the main uh, you know uh, main link language you know if one can actually use that. So that does raise a lot of fear about uh, imposition of Hindi in some way or the other from the BJP side. You see this moderation that you are talking about uh, I think uh, MGR was in favor of a a policy of moderation for various reasons. It, in Tamil Nadu itself, the DMK, both the parent, if, if I can call it that, the parent faction of the DMK led by Karunanidhi and the breakaway faction led by MGR, which became a full political yes, party. Uh, full-fledged uh, political yeah, party. Yeah, full-fledged political party. They were also negotiating their relationship with religion, especially Hinduism. Mm -hmm. Tamil Nadu is a state where more, almost 90% of the pop, 88% of the popula population is Hindu. Right. They were also negotiating some sort of a relationship with Hinduism. Gone were the days of atheism and complete debunking of God. Uh, you know, as uh, as as had been the ideology in the time of Periyar. Right. Even Anadure s subscribed to it to a certain extent and Karunanidhi also during his days of power in the earlier stages uh, in public he always subscribed to the official policy of the Dravidian movement right. which was one of atheism and rationalism. Right. Now, but the public, uh, if you look at the Tamil public, they are amongst the most religious, at least at a superficial level, uh, amongst the most religious in India. You know, Ta Tamil people even normally have the vibhuti and the That's kumkum. Right. You know, would you say that it was this uh, display of personal religiosity on part of the Tamil people hmm. that possibly uh, led to DMK, uh, you know, you know, changing its position somewhat, you know, what was indicated by uh, the obituary that I was referring to earlier that uh, Karunanidhi became more aware and became a more public Hindu than what he was earlier. He realized that I cannot keep on beating the drum of atheism and rationality, you know. There has to be a certain amount of acceptance of religiosity and the desire of the Tamil people to be part of Hindu society. Now here comes a paradox that there is this desire of being part of the greater Hindu society. Yet there is still no acceptance for the BJP despite one and a half decades at least of very concerted efforts. I have seen of course you know right from the Hindu Munnani days in Tamil Nadu. Initially the BJP worked through Hindu Munnani, the RSS also did it. But at least for the last 15 years the BJP has been trying to leverage politics on its own strength, why has it failed? BJP politicians in Tamil Nadu, including the present Kader, I suspect, hmm. have not been quite able to convey to the central leadership of the BJP the nuances of Tamil Hinduism, if I can use a term like that. Superficially, is the most Hindu among all parts of India. The temples alone, you know, are a, are a proof of, right. the, uh, 
of that sort of deep roots that Hinduism has in Tamil Nadu. And these are all living temples, living right. temples in the sense that every day there is some temple festival, some special form of worship to which thousands of people flock, right. whether it's the morning Abhishekam or the evening Arti, they flock in droves to the right. temple. So there had to be some sort of a dilution of the atheist principle of the There has to be. Yeah. So would you say that where possibly the, the BJP has not been able to understand, and one of the reasons why it has not succeeded is personal religiosity does not ensure it bring, being brought into politics. BJP's Hinduism is very much part of its politics. This is not something that is going to work in Tamil Nadu. I think the nuances of the Tamil um, religious feelings have not been understood by the central leadership, the BJP. They have looked at it, in my opinion, at a, from a very superficial point of view. They have seen the temples, they have seen the religiosity of the vibhuti and the kumkum on the foreheads of men and women alike right. and concluded that these that are the most Hindu of all people. And thereby, so thereby Tamil Nadu is us. a very fertile well, ground, it should uh, be a ground cakewalk for, us. For, for our kind of politics. That is not possibly the case. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, Sudha Jha for coming and talking about Tamil politics and you know really being able to peel off the various layers of, of it for our audience. I hope that you would be able to understand Tamil politics better than when you started listening to this conversation. Thank you very much.